More big news in the Ghislaine Maxwell world as a judge rules to unveil and publicly release what is being described as explosive documents. Frankie C's back in the mix. JSAP's here once again, and we're talking about Ghislaine Maxwell and the Jeffrey Epstein case. And uh, they're also trying to sell both of Jeffrey Epstein's uh, East Coast homes. So we'll talk about that as well. Uh, But here's the latest on what's been going on. So Judge Loretta Preska in Manhattan ruled yesterday to unseal more than 80 documents that Ghislaine Maxwell had wanted to keep under wraps. Preska, by the way, I'm super uncomfortable with judges' last names being put out there now. I feel like after that last poor judge Why? and what happened to her. Oh, yes. yes. You, just want, you just want the least amount of this information out there as possible. Preska said the documents which will run to hundreds of pages should be made public within a week. They include flight logs from Epstein's jets, a deposition in 2016 in which Maxwell's lawyer said she had asked, she was asked intrusive questions about her sex life. The documents also include police reports from Palm Beach, Florida, where Epstein had a home. It'll include communications between Maxwell and Epstein from January of 2015, when Virginia Roberts Guffrey made allegations about them in court papers. In the papers, Guffrey claimed she was forced to have sex with Prince Andrew three times when she was just 17 at Epstein's command. The documents were part of a defamation lawsuit brought by Guffrey against Maxwell, which was confidentially settled in 2017. The case is separate from the criminal proceedings against Maxwell, who was accused of procuring girls as young as 14 for Epstein to abuse. That's just the summary of what... I mean, there's a little bit more in there, but that's just the summary, the first part of, like, what this judge is doing. And there's a couple of interesting things in here uh, that I want to mention right off the start before we let you guys get a a comment in. The judge is ordering this to be public within a week. That's a crazy short amount of time. The... The lawyers for Maxwell, they're trying to get them to stop it altogether. And when that was apparent, the judge was like, no, it's coming out. They were like, well, please then at least give us two weeks. Mm. What? Why do they like? I know it's their job to stall, but doesn't that look worse when you're trying to, you know what I mean? Like what's going to change in two weeks? Right, exactly. What's going to change in two weeks now? Supposedly, and according to this article from the Daily Mail, so don't yell at me, yell at the Daily Mail. Um, supposedly if somebody is mentioned in these papers, they have a right, which this kind of sucks because I think at the, at the core of all of this, don't we all want to know who is involved? Yes, of course. Like that's, that's the golden nugget. Like, it's not a question. Is there any, like, I, I, I haven't seen anybody be like, well, I don't know if he really did this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's nobody that's like innocent till proven guilty nobody's really having that sort of discussion it's more of who the hell is involved in this and that's that's the whole point but according to this if somebody's mentioned in these papers they have a right to have their name taken out so like if it's how could this judge release it then because she said that the okay, I'll, let me. That's a great question, Frank. Let me read you what the judge yep. said. Uh, during the hearing at Manhattan's federal court, Judge Prescott said Maxwell's right to privacy was outweighed by the need for the documents to become public. She went through dozens of documents, which included Guffrey's depositions and various dull-sounding legal papers. The contents, however, could be explosive and may contain fresh evidence against the wealthy elite who socialized with Epstein. After the ruling, Maxwell's lawyers asked for a two-week delay in the unsealing so they could file an appeal in the Second Circuit in New York. Uh, Maxwell's lawyers, Laura Menninger, said, they have been, There have been some significant changes with respect to my client's positions and perhaps known to everyone listening to this while we were speaking about a potential ongoing criminal investigation before, since that time, Ms. Maxwell has been indicted and a trial has been scheduled. Now we are in a vastly different position and have grave concerns about our client's ability to receive a fair trial given the intense media scrutiny around this uh, unsealing. Guffrey's lawyer, 
Sigrid McCauley said she wanted the documents made public as swiftly as possible. The judge said that if the Second Circuit had not ruled within a week, then the files should be made public. So there's still like a little sliver of a chance that we don't get this if the Second Circuit goes, no, you can't do it. But this was one judge says yes. The other judge says no. I mean, how do they? Because they have because it's it's appeals and the circuits and, you know, they all have one has to answer to the next all the way up to the Supreme Court. So that's basically what we're looking at here. But it's really interesting that that's why I said, like the delay and then one of them wants to move swiftly because they don't want to, to give the other circuit a chance to say to shut their door to this. Right. Um. The the documents that they're talking about specifically come from this deposition where there was a defamation case that Guffrey brought against Maxwell because after Guffrey said all this stuff, Maxwell said she's a liar. So then Guffrey sued her for defamation and they settled out of uh, out of court, which I did not know anything about. Did it? Have you guys heard any of that before? No. Yeah, that was not in the Netflix documentary that 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 there had been a case and there had been a. <laughs> Uh, not this a decision thing is maybe. so insanely complicated. It is so it really is. insanely complicated. And uh, they're talking about, I think, something like 2,000 pages here of stuff to come out. Jeez. So, like, that's the kind of thing that comes out. And you're talking about days and days and days of news as people comb through it and see what is uh, what's in there. Um... I want to get to this part about the the people being able to keep their names from the public. I forget. They would be referred to as John Doe's, I think. So then what's the point? Boring. Um, I mean, why release them at all if they're just going to be called John Doe? Well, I mean, there's a wealth of information in there to begin with, whether, whether or not you're hearing the people's names or not, right? Um, yeah, but you assume that there are names on it, and you assume... We know like what it's contained. The the only thing we're missing is the names, right? No, no, they've not seen these documents have been sealed. Oh, oh I thought it was like flight records and stuff. The flight records we had seen already because some of those were public knowledge. They had been released already. Uh, but these are a whole new set of documents because the Miami Herald and their reporter, Julie Brown, who I believe is the reporter that's in the Netflix documentary. Uh, they're, they were the ones who sued to have these released. Mm, okay. Uh, as a result, there are thousands of pages of documents which are being released on a rolling basis. Each time a person's name comes up, they are notified and given the chance to make objections to their name becoming public. There were two John Doe's in this last batch of documents that were released, but they did not make any complaints when approached to make any comments according to court filings. Can you imagine one of those people being like contacted and saying, well, we're going to release your name. Do you want us to or not? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I got no problem with that. Like what? I mean, no one's going to say yes to that. The only you're right. The only way somebody's going to say yes to that is if they're staunchly innocent and they're going to be like, yeah, go ahead and right. release my name because I didn't. Yeah. But like, why would you even want your name associated with anything like this? It's true, but you know what the weird thing is, is as we talked about with the flight logs, there's already a ton of people who are associated with this, whether they like it or not. Yeah. Right, but we don't know what these documents are going to be. Right. They're, they're, those people that are on those flight logs, which is everybody from Tom Hanks to, you know, like, beloved people like Tom Hanks and John Legend and, you know, whoever else to, you know, slightly creepier people. Um, Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they're already associated with it, whether they like it or not. And, and how, how innocent they are or not. And you know, what's funny. I still, I have not seen any of them be like, yeah, I, I went there for a thing and it was like a fundraiser. There's no statements, right? Nobody's made any statements. I've not seen any statements about this. The only thing I saw was, um, what's her name? Tegan? Tegan? Chrissy, Chrissy Tegan? Tegan? Yeah. Wasn't she, she was going crazy on Twitter saying, you know, this is all BS and, you know, uh, nothing to do with it, stuff like that. I don't think she's denying that she... I, I'm not sure. She's, like, not denying that she went there or anything. I think right. she's just denying that she did anything wrong. Yeah, I think she had, like, an explosion a couple of days ago or a week or two ago about on social media about 
all right. kinds of stuff. People were calling her mean or something, saying she was a phony or I don't know. Was that part of it? Was this whole part of it? I don't know. I know. I just know she went, you know, she, a little bit of a, a rant, but I guess justifiably, if she's if you're an innocent person and you're getting swept up in this, I don't know. I don't know. Or like, is I, she innocent? Don't right. know. I don't know. I, I, are any of us prepared to say any of these people are in his? I mean, to be honest with you. We have nothing you, to go on, really. We have nothing to go on. Hanks is like the only one I'm holding on hope for that he's in his. Oh, please, God. Sam. No. I, I love Hanks. Like, what, what, as a society, if that, that would be like the, 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 the knockout blow. We it's just got to start over. Crushing blow. Just rebuild. Society, start over. Just that's it. We're done. Yeah. We had a good run. It's over. Let's just, let's just knock it all down and start again. I mean, that's the end. The only thing I can compare this to was like when when 14 year old Anthony watched Hulk Hogan join the NWO. That's as devastating as it gets watching somebody not be the person you thought they were. Slight difference there, but uh, <laughs> I see I see I see where you're going. But, because uh, I grew up <laughs> on the vitamins and the prayers and believing in and and the flag. You know what I'm saying? Hulkamania. I get Hulkamania it. was running me. wild in me, Janine. Okay. You lost me there. You lost me now, in it, wrestling. Is it still running wild with you? No, then he so turned he on. He went back. Then he, he turned on Macho back. Man Randy Savage and we could never recover. Oh, God. There you go. That should get some of the comments off for you, Janine, and mm. on to me. Thank God. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Okay. Send them that way, guys. I'm trying not to make so many faces. I don't want to upset people. He was really interesting until <laughs> he started talking about wrestling. What an idiot. Um, <laughs> Give me two seconds. That's what yeah, she you said. Got, you got two seconds. Um, I, I would be devastated if Hanks turns out to be a creeper. I'm sorry. I would be... Anybody else? I can't really, I can't really remember who else was on that list. But anybody else, I I would just be like, I, not okay. Hanks. Right. He's so good. I know. That would be bad. Wilson! He's so good. And I, I would put, I don't know why, but John Legend is coming to my mind, too. I would put Legend on that list, too. Because, like, every time we have, every time we need somebody to sing something on piano, we call him. Exactly. He's there yeah, during. There's never been anything negative, I don't think, with him, right? No, he's there during Christmas no. time. He's there during Fourth of July. It's like you know, I don't know. Just get John Legend. It's it'll be great. Yeah, name he's like a Legend. good guy. He's a yeah. good guy. Yeah. Half the people in this country can't name an album of his, but they'll see him on TV. And they're like, oh, I gotta watch this guy. You know, they, like that's just the kind of guy. That's just what, what he portrays. That's true. And I think was Will Smith on that list too? I can't remember. I don't know the list. Will Smith is a whole other thing we have to get get into, and his, that whole marriage thing. That's that's, that's a, a weird one. What happened that's, that's... to Will Smith? What'd you say? Well, nothing happened. What to happened him, to him? He's... Well, he changed from well, like grew, years he's ago. He's like fifty something. You know, he's he's in his fifties, right? Mm, he, I, mean, I think maybe he's fifty two. I know. He, maybe he maybe that's why, because I always loved him as a fresh prince. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when's the last time he came out with a rap album? I don't think it was that long ago. <laughs> really? Yeah, no. I do have. I got. <laughs> I do have a thought on this, but I don't want to. I don't want to derail the uh, our uh, our little topic train here. Okay. Um. So that. So that's the Epstein. So that's the the document. So potentially next Thursday or Friday, we could be looking at like a massive. You know unboxing of these documents and and to see what's what's in there and who is going to be included i doubt they'll say like who was actually included but i guess they're going to tell us like what exactly happened there did i finish the john doe thing i can't remember now if i finished it or not that's what she said <laughs> there were two De definitely that's what she said <laughs> oh yeah I, there was more here so the last time they released documents it was two thousand pages and it was the day before epstein Killed himself. Oh. Um, he just say died. The doc died. The documents included unpublished an unpublished manuscript of a memoir from Epstein's accuser, Virginia Roberts, which detailed her years of abuse by him. There were deposition from Epstein's pilots, his former associates, and flight logs showing him traveling the globe 
with his victims and famous people such as Bill Clinton. Again, this is in the Daily Mail article. Uh, so that's where the flight logs came from, was this, that release. That's why we have that information. Um, among those who have taken an interest in the defamation case are lawyers for a John Doe who appears to be somebody who will be featured in the documents. His identity is unclear, but the powerful men who have been accused of involvement with Epstein include former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak, or Barak, uh, on the same day, Maxwell was dealt another blow when the judge overseeing her criminal case refused her request to gag the FBI prosecutors and victims' lawyers. So she wanted all, like, the FBI and everybody to have a gag order, like, they couldn't, like, do interviews oh. or couldn't do okay. And the judge squashed that, too. Do we know when this trial is going to happen for her? Great question, Frank. Unfortunately. That's two for me. Too. Much, to our, much to our much to our chagrin, my friend. Much to our chagrin. Uh twenty twenty one is when they believe they'll be able to start this trial. Maybe. Why such a why such a wait? I mean I understand courts are backed up, blah blah blah, but this is one of those biggies. Yeah, uh, but it's like any other thing when you go to get a court date, even I bet you the average John Doe fighting a parking ticket not a parking ticket, but you know, like an accident. Uh, a regular court case right now would probably stretch into late 2020, early 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a regular John, you know, a regular whatever case. But this isn't a regular whatever case. Right. I know I you're like saying maybe they could bump it up a little because of its importance. I don't know if they do that. I, I don't because you have to give you have to give her enough time to build her defense. Right. They That's have to true. be able to if I can if I can give you let me give you some knowledge. OK, entirely. Let me give you my lawyer expertise entirely oh, based sure. based on my cousin Vinny. The defendants, Sam Esquire, <laughs> the defendants have a right to cross examine. You know, that's the, so she has a right. It's called disclosure, you dickhead. <laughs> 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 now Frank you're being mean you know Maxwell's lawyers Maxwell's yeah. lawyers are in there getting ready to finesse the prosecution you know just getting ready for, to finesse them you, get, you gotta finesse them a little <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah alright so that's all that's the, that's the whole entire gem of this uh, first piece the second part of this is they put um Jeffrey Epstein's Florida home up for sale and his Manhattan home up for sale combined together. They are both trying to fetch a hundred and ten million dollars. Oh, my God. Sure. Here's here's what I think should happen there. I mean, you got these two houses. I think you treat it like the OJ house. You just demolish it and build something else over it. Did they demolish OJ's house? Yeah, the famous his. Oh, really? House is gone. Yeah. Oh, so where the murder? Because wait, not the, where the murders took place. No, that was in his uh, house. His that, house. His house. Okay. Yeah. What happened to the house where the murders took place? I think that's still there. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I think that still exists. It was like a, Ooh. not like a condo, but it's like it's like a, a, a series of houses that were together or something like that. The but, yeah, OJ's house was knocked down. That was like a bunch of years ago. And then they found remember they found that knife that was a story, but it wasn't oh, yeah. had nothing to do with anything. Oh really? No, I don't remember that. I do remember they that did I find think. a knife on the pro like when they demolished everything, like in the ground somewhere. But, but apparently it had nothing to do with anything. That's funny. Um, Epstein's Upper East Side Mansion is listed at $88 million and the Florida residence is listed at 22. Who's going to want to move into that? Well, you know, it's hysterical. They, the, um, the real estate agent, there's a quote from the real estate agent that was like, you know, like it's Palm Beach, like we'll sell it. Like, we, it, like despite what's out there, I think she said, despite what's out there, we shouldn't have a problem selling it. Like we shouldn't have a problem we selling it. You know those like sitcoms and movies and stuff where like the real estate agent doesn't disclose like this was built over a cemetery yeah. or something. Yeah. The only way they sell those houses is if they keep what actually happened there under wraps. This can't. It's like already out there. There's no way to keep this under wraps. 
there's no way they're selling this. Like how, especially for 88 million or whatever the hell, you know, that, uh, who's going to want to live in this house? Oddly, yeah, I know. Could you imagine being shown around the house and there's a lovely ensuite here? And I don't know. Do you like tying up victims? Because if you look at the other room, it'd be great to just like, you know, I, I don't know. I think I think you'll find somebody for the Florida house who will just knock it down and build something That's what else. You, gotta do. you just got to demolish that. By the way, and I don't want to be insensitive here, but was I the only one unimpressed by this Florida house? Like it was kind of piece of shit if you ask me yeah it was just okay well, i haven't seen it is it what well it's how many million is it going for 22 what did you say Janine? you said it was just okay yeah it, i thought it would be much like it wasn't what i thought it would be right they were loosely using that word mansion like wait like right like uh, uh, 22 did, million you think it would be ridiculous oh, i think all those houses are really like jammed close together anyway so it's not they like are. you know it's not like what you picture, like out in the Hamptons. Speaking of which, by the way, the some one of the restaurant tours out in the Hamptons made news the other day. We didn't have a chance to talk about this yet, but there was supposedly a table that was like reserved for yes, I saw that. famous people, or I don't know if it was the two of them specifically, but it said the table that Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein used to dine at, and he took it outside and burned it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's the only way to. You, you need a, a an old priest and a young priest in that restaurant to get rid of whatever's in there. <laughs> I mean, burn it's, the table, burn the chairs. It's so weird. I don't know this restaurant tour personally, but I know a lot of people who do who who know him, and it and it's seventy five Main, so it's a very yeah. it's a very posh spot. You know, like a lot of celebrities do go and dine there. I thought it was weird because if like if Epstein had frequented my place, I just wouldn't say shit about it. I would just. Right. Move on. Like, I don't know who that. Is. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, Maybe. but he. Huh? Yeah, uh -huh. he he like drew all this attention to himself and really like pulled like some national headlines out of it, like him out and and he was out there with like a bunch of girls. Like that was the other weird part. Like I didn't really see the article too well, but I read like the the photo was like him with like six like hot waitresses like standing outside burning this table. I was like, this is a little weird. Well, it's kind of strange. <laughs> yeah. I think I think if you're that restaurant owner. You, all new silverware, all new flatware. Yeah, yeah. Like okay. you just you just torch whatever you can. You you have to, you have to. But it was just it was it was weird because it was like I don't think anybody was thinking like oh, Jeffrey Epstein must have eaten here. Like nobody was you. It's not like it. Like who cares, right? It, who cares? It's not like you committed a crime. It's not like you were getting. You were just. It right. just doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm sure he ate a lot of places. Yeah. You know? I'm sure he ate in the Burger Nobody, King. They're not, they're not all, yeah. He definitely ate at the Y. A <laughs> uh, little, little dirty joke there. A little dirty joke there. If you got that, Frank. Get it? I don't get it. A little silly Explain humor for you people. I was getting... Oh, Janine is so he upset. Ate. Let's let let Janine talk. Janine is very angry. And go, I'll let you talk, Janine. Go ahead. Uh, it's not that I'm angry. I'm just saddened. <laughs> Let me set the table. So the last episode, last podcast episode that we did, Frank wasn't in on it, um, has exploded. And is really doing really, really well out there. I think that's why it exploded. I wasn't and, there. And no. Yeah, I'm worried, no. I'm worried about it. If this one doesn't go, you're off the podcast. <laughs> this is it, guys. Come on. <laughs> run those numbers up. <laughs> Frank. Um, or down. I don't care. <laughs> um, and anyway, and as as it does is when something hits a little virality, a lot of people tend to comment on it. And a lot of people comment on it without really knowing full stories and things of that nature. And, you know, I've been doing this for a really long time. Frank's had some radio experience. Uh, Janine, you would say this is relatively new for you. I mean, yeah. You've done some performances. Uh, you know, there was that, that Britney video from a couple of years ago. I remember that. That's right. That was a big one. Um, but anyway, go ahead. So go ahead. Well, you know, it, as you said, you've done this a long time. So, you know, people, there's going to be a whole lot of negative comments because people love negativity. So, of course, they jumped on me. <laughs> people love, people thrive on negativity. Yes. It, so 
it was just a lot of that um, unintelligent, I make stupid faces. Um, I wanted to say like that I was an ex, ex escort. Nah. Is that what somebody called you an ex escort? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it seems like on, she was people. trying to say that she was an ex escort because I was talking about the whole geisha thing. Um, that has nothing to do with that. But it's just funny because it's like the faces thing. If you know me in real life, I'm very expressive. Mm-hmm. Right, Frank? Right, uh, Anthony? Yes. Absolutely. <sighs> but it was just funny. But, you know, I had to comment back. I Okay, yeah. so I it wasn't on the YouTube comments, but somebody, I don't know if they, I can't remember if they wrote me on Facebook or or, um, or through email, but, and I don't know if they were responding to the comments that were in the, the comment section of the YouTube page, but oh, no. somebody wrote me and said that they enjoyed your facial expressions. How you see? Stop it. I want to oh, say God. it was April, but I can't 100% confirm that. I was, oh, it was. Was I it? I did see her say that, yes. You saw that? Okay, so mm-hmm. all right. I'm glad you saw that. So there you go. So this is someone you know? No. They're, they're uh, uh, listening. Oh, you said that you could see her saying that. Well, it was on, it was in Facebook then, if she saw it. Oh, okay. No, I thought yes. you, like, you knew the person and they, oh, no, uh, you no. could see them support, you know, saying something supportive. Why are you trying to shit on her parade, Frank? What's that about? <laughs> I'm just pointing out some stuff that. But, uh, people who don't so, know you don't like you. But people who like who know you like you. By the way, let's let's bring that up. The 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 worst, most damaging comments about Janine were actually from Frank and his alias. Uh, <laughs> that excellent. He made like fifteen different aliases. <laughs> did <laughs> I? <laughs> you did. <laughs> that ex yeah, I made a bunch of, a bunch of slut. I did a bunch of accounts. I, I made up a bunch of accounts just to just to get to Janine in this one video. You yeah. got me. You got me. Frank was the ex escort one. That was him. <laughs> well, that's true. I actually was laughing hysterically at that one. So. We're waiting for you to come <gasps> clean, Jenny. Oh, also that I can't sit still, but like I can't sit still. So thank How you. I don't know. Insult? Oh, man, you're exactly. taking this too hard. You're taking this way too I told you, don't read know, the comments. Right? I know. I'm sure you, you can't go down that rabbit too, hole. Fam, right? Have I experienced this? I've had every bit of me picked apart. Oh. Every bit of me picked apart. The most, the most viral podcast that was before you guys, before we started doing it here. Most viral podcast I had. I spent two minutes talking about CC before I got to the topic, and I never thought <laughs> it, it, it. I never did this to to go viral. I just did it because I like to do it. So I was talking about CC, and then I talked about whatever the topic was. It's still the most popular one today, and you will still. I could point to a comment from like three days ago where people are like, "What is this asshole talking about? Just get to the point, right?" Are you kidding me? Yeah, or who gives a shit about your daughter? Yeah, oh, people are brutal. I told you I was sorry about that. <laughs> people are brutal. People pick on my eyebrows, my nose. What? Like everything. when people when people get behind a computer and they they don't have to talk to you face to face. Oh yeah, they just can unleash and it's ridiculous it's Um, i do want to point something out though go ahead someone said that um i look a little rough and i haven't taken a shower i take a shower every day and this hair is long island humidity okay (laughs) yeah this hair too (laughs) just want to explain that that's it (laughs) um it's it was just it was a lot of comments frank i suggest you go back and read them over dinner you hung up on these things. Wait, I know. I'm getting I, I, this stupid internet. Oh, and then oh wait, here's the biggest can't, thing. I can't let it get to you. Here's the biggest thing that I sound like I'm on drugs. I think because I have such a delay in my ear, it makes me sound like day. But really, <laughs> I'm <laughs> it makes me too. trying yeah. to listen to myself, and I get it's distracted. My, exactly. Sometimes this stuff doesn't come through exactly the way you want it, and. What I say comes out maybe a second or two later on the screen yes. in front of me. Yes. And so when my comments are a little ahead or I'm stepping on someone else's lines or whatever someone's saying, it's because I'm delayed. So people, right. people are going to make fun of stuff because they don't understand what they're talking about. But and the you thing can't is, let them get to you. Right. The thing is, the drugs comment was not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Stop 
taking drugs. You won't have that problem. I will say my hair. I, I do will, play with my hair. I will Relay. say there were so many this woman's on drugs comments that I literally for a second sat back and went, is she doing drugs that I don't know about? <laughs> a lot of people are bringing this up. I, I didn't think she was a drug addict, but maybe. I don't know. It, you got us thinking now. You got us thinking. <laughs> oh, God. Hysterical. Oh, man. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, Janine is a proud mother, a wonderful, well, a wife. I used to ask her <laughs> husband. I don't know. <laughs> if I said wonderful, then I got to hear it from your husband. Then your yeah, husband right, would be exactly. on and be like, Anthony doesn't know what he's talking about. No, exactly. He'll be <laughs> a proud former escort. A proud, <laughs> proud former dominatrix. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. The thing is, is like if you see if somebody here's the thing, and, I, and this has always been a, a, a rule of thumb for me, and, and I think some other people, the smart people at least. If somebody actually takes the time out of their day to write something nice about you, that is a wonderful gift. Right. And it represents probably what a lot of people are thinking. They just took the time to actually write it out and send it to you. Um, um, what about the bad comments then? What? <laughs> what about the bad comments then? So the bad comments. Bad that's, comments. That's yeah. a lot easier because, that's you know. True. And, and and be honest, and I was definitely this way before I got into the business. Like, if you're having a rough day or you're having a bad time and someone comes into your periphery, whether it's on the road and you're driving or you're walking and somebody's in front of you and, and annoying the shit out of you or now it's online or whatever. If you're having a rough day, odds are you're going to unleash on that person, take it out on them way more than you would have if you would have, you know, having a great day. It's true, but here's the thing. I and, think I okay. just remembered what I did a long time ago, which wasn't so nice. So maybe this is like payback. Um, I had ran into, what's his name? The guy from um, American Idol. He was in Rocket Ages. Uh, what's his name? You know him. I was going to say Seacrest until you said Rock of Ages. Aspirus no, uh, Wagalagigas? What was that guy's name? He's the Greek guy, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Greek guy. So I actually had met him twice. The first John time Stamos. he was really nice. No, not John Stamos. Okay. Racist. Constantine Maroulis. There you go. Constantine Maroulis. There you go. There you go. I was so, so close. First time I met you were. First time I met him, so nice. He told me to come um, see his Broadway show, blah, blah, blah. Second time. I don't know why I said this. He was coming out from the subway at Grand Central and he just looked like he looked terrible. Like he looked like just like down and mad. So I said to him. <laughs> oh, God. Ooh, Constantine, you don't look so good. It's oh. <laughs> just terrible. The guy's obviously having a rough day. I mean, and here you come. I don't, don't even know so why good. I said that. <laughs> And he what looked is, up at me, reaction? and he was like, I mean, it was the lamest reaction. He's like, you don't look so good either. And then I just started laughing hysterically. <laughs> and he was probably like, what a bitch, really? <laughs> so this is my payback. Yeah. I'll take it. That wasn't nice that I, I said that. But I didn't mean it in like a bad way. It just like he looked down, and I was like, oh, you don't look so good. <laughs> hey, look, everybody's been, you know. Uh, mean or in some way uh, impolite to other people it happens yeah but i feel like with uh you know something that you choose to watch and like if you're one of i don't know it's just you gotta you gotta take it with a grain of salt you gotta that's true frank you can't that's true. first when... of all not everybody is watching it like in a great mood and you know and they're sitting there going i'm gonna be entertained by this they're sitting there they're looking for something to be angry at that's true you know and they're just taking it out on the first thing that they see and then that's it that so, thing is me. One time, Sometimes. yes. One <laughs> time, one time I, I met Elvis Costello. It was a really okay. wonderful moment. I'm such a huge fan of his. person I'm with, who I worked with at the time, um, we go to take a picture and she's, she, she's walking up to him and she goes, you've really lost a lot of weight. She says it like that. Like, not like, you look great, man. 
you know, like she says, like, you've really lost a lot. He was so uh, annoyed. <gasps> he was so pissed. Yeah, wasn't he sick? No. Uh, uh, years later, it turned out he had cancer. Yeah. But um, oh, God. Okay. which he beat subsequently. But I believe this was all before that. Um, again, I don't know his old medical oh. history, but I just remember he did look great. He had he had ballooned up a little bit, you know, and he then he got like really into nice shape. And he looked great. And she, the way she said it, he looked so pissed off. And I totally understood it because it's like, it's not you look like shit, Constantine, or you look great, Elvis. It's the judgment. You know what I'm saying? And, right. Like, who was I? And these people are constantly judged all the time. And so, like, when they meet you, like, they don't want to fucking hear your status report on what you think of them. You know what I mean? Yes. But, like, a positive one, I, you know. Even a positive there has one. To be some personal there, you know, maybe. But also the way she said it was not the you know the most wonderful oh. way to like. It wasn't like, hey, you look great. She was like, you've really lost a lot of weight, like that. Like, that's not how you deliver that compliment. You know what I mean? No. So but here's the thing: when you become a celebrity, or infamous, or a semi-famous. <laughs> You do open yourself up to all these comments. You're, you're going to get it for that later. Oh, yes, I am. That's, <laughs> yeah, I did oh, that on purpose. Man. Right here, guys. I did that on purpose. Right here. <laughs> but it's true. Like, just think. This drug this addict thinks she's a celebrity. This is laughable. <laughs> she's semi-famous? Who, who said? What? <laughs> she can't even get me, a, get me a semi. Give me a semi. There you go. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> that's, that's happening, too. Oh boy. <laughs> um, it's true though. Like, just think. Okay, so if you go to any celebrity's profile on Instagram, mm -hmm. any picture, there is so many negative comments about them. Yeah. Like, like I'll tell you who, who I was looking at the other day, and I got sucked into that rabbit hole. Cardi uh -huh. B posted a picture, and it was ridiculous the amount of comments. Like, people just like saying how she looked like shit and. She was fat and all this stuff. And you're like, are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. And it's weird. It's like, I don't know where people get the right or think like right. they, they, you know, on the it's one true. hand, look, if you choose a public life, this is that that's you're subject to all of this, you know, and that's, that's also, you know, what becomes part of it. But on the same side of it, it's like, you know, who gives a shit what you think? You know, exactly. that, that, that's why I don't comment on people's looks or this or that. Or, you know, if it comes up on the on on the thing and I got to give an opinion on it, that's one thing which happens. But, you know, for the most part, to just randomly go by and be like this, this is shitty. That's why I don't comment a lot on people's YouTubes or Facebook or Twitter, or Instagram. But whenever I do, it's a positive thing, you know, because it's like, why be the other thing? Everybody wants to be the other thing. Everybody so easily that's defaults true. to negative. You yeah. know, point out the good thing in somebody's, you know, in somebody's video or picture or whatever. Right. Even though I just sent you guys the picture of that woman's whole ass out in Walmart. Oh, I'm going to get a comment about shopping in Walmart. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, God. You're just lining them up. I just. <laughs> you are just setting yourself up. See, the thing, the thing about Constantine, though, I have to say, of course, I thought we were friends because we met once randomly on the street. <laughs> I really, one. I really, I wish I had a was... chalkboard or something. <laughs> <laughs> Again. I really was concerned. And that's why I was like, oh, no, you don't look so good. Yeah. But here's the, here's the thing. Like, right, you know, when someone's like, oh, I don't feel good. And then the other person says, yeah, you don't look so good. Right. I never say that. Or I'm tired. Or like, yeah, you look really tired. I think what you're saying is, is you, were, you were genuinely concerned. I was. You were genuinely concerned, which mm -hmm. is which is OK. But the thing is, is he doesn't really need your concern. Yeah, no, he doesn't <laughs> need my thing. concern. No, even that's, though we were like some random woman on the subway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like you would never say that stuff to your friends. You, you know, you would never say you look tired. And so you'd say I, yeah. it's just one. Exactly. Person I wouldn't you say you once. look tired. Right. Or you look don't look so good. But to him. Yeah. You but I, I so have good. to say, there's something about people that we feel that we need to naturally evaluate. Oh, yeah. The other person, because I, mm -hmm. and again, I'm not famous or, uh, you know, we all know where I sit in the world. But when I meet people, especially being on the radio, you know, when they can't watch on 
on Facebook or YouTube, the people who don't, when they meet me, they always say the same thing. You are nothing you know? what I expected you to look like. Really? All the time. Every time. Well, that's, yeah, that's everybody in radio. You never, I have they never look like. Yeah. I've never met somebody and they go, yeah, this is exactly what I thought you were going to look like. It's never happened. Not once. And, you know, people have said to me like, hey, you look good. Or people have said, I've met people and they've been like, yeah, you look like you're getting a little heavy there, man. Like and like, it's totally okay to say, you know. See, that's me. That's that's the girl who said yeah. that. Yeah. So See, a you've lot had of a these few stalkers too. Very... What? Sure. Wait, Janine. You've had a few stalkers. Oh. Not me. I was gonna say a lot of these comments are very comparative. Like people are saying, "You look this way compared to how I'm used to seeing you." Right. right. A lot of these aren't. I am meeting you for the first time. You're a fat bat. You know, it's not. A lot of them aren't aren't that. A lot of them are. Hey, you didn't look. You didn't used to look like this. You look like that. So maybe some of them are are people concerned, like you were concerned for him for um, <laughs> Constantine. It, for Constantine. So maybe some of it is coming out of a place of concern, like, hey, something's up. You don't look the way you used to look. She looks like she's on drugs. Maybe we can help her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Nothing she, beats homely, though. Nothing beats homely. Nope. Homely oh, was see, great. That, stop I will never get over that. Wait, I actually saw Janine answer one comment. Did you? <laughs> did you answer a comment? Yeah, that's a that's a. That's a no, because then you get stuck. Oh no! Going down that rat hole, right? I'm only in there answering some comments because I'm. Tri- <laughs> it's like it's like you literally are a, a, a four year old going. I'm gonna go swim in the ocean and take on these waves. <laughs> yeah, not- watch this. <laughs> you can't you can't do it nope. don't do it don't, don't get try. sucked in don't get sucked in because you leave it alone it That's gets it. ignored it's over it's yeah. passed. a couple it's days like the, it'll be gone it's like the boy picking on me in uh, fourth fifth and sixth grade who shall remain nameless you keep going back he's gonna keep doing it you stop no more well that's the hilarious thing about comments <laughs> right if somebody puts yes. a comment on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and you don't read it, it it doesn't really exist. Exactly. It doesn't exist. Only if it connects and lands does it actually exist. Like, it's like throwing a punch. If you swing and throw a punch, it doesn't matter. You swing and throw a punch and hit somebody in the jaw, it matters. You know? So if you completely ignore that and by the way, like I will, I read the comments. I do give up at a certain point, like when it reaches a certain number, like it gets a little too crazy. Or if somebody is, I could, but I can tell who's a blatant asshole and who's not. Oh yeah. You know, um, but I'm only <laughs> in there for for certain reasons. You know, to just to connect with people and right. You know, if you enjoyed it, hey, subscribe and that kind of thing, and you know. That's really right. it. Uh, you don't see me in there going, no, actually, I, blah, blah, you know, because there's no point. There's no. You don't don't have to actually, yourself. I have good eyebrows. <laughs> you don't owe anybody any explanations. Okay. You know, they want to assume what they want to assume. No, that's right. it. Well, well right. that was your response. What were you responding to? I forget which one it was, but I just saw your response. And I was like, oh, no. I told I told a lot of people to EAD, eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? And by the way, do you oh, know? God. Do you know the conversations I've had to have with my wife, with my mother? Like, <gasps> really? You like, don't comment to these people. You cannot uh. respond or answer. And like I've said, I've had everything from my looks to you should be fired to like all this crazy ass shit, like crazy shit. <sighs> Life of a celebrity, fam. Yeah, we we should fire you from your podcast. I one time I was I did a bit one time on the air and it was about it was some movie with the uh, the rabbit James Corden played a rabbit I forget oh Jack the rabbit or some shit I don't know that sounds familiar I can't remember so there was one scene where they were bullying one of the rabbits with like nuts and some of the nut allergy people got upset right no and so I get into hysterics because I'm reading this article and when I explain this, you'll realize this has nothing to do with people that have nut allergies. And I forget what it what, what the wording of the article was, but essentially they pointed out in the article that the second, it was like the second leading nut um, 
What's the group when you lobbyist, the second leading nut lobbyist in Washington has taken this on, you know, and that caught me so funny because all I kept thinking about was this lobbyist got labeled as the second biggest nut lobbyist. Like it must be driving <laughs> him crazy. Nut by itself is... <laughs> no, no, no. Like, no, right. no. Like it, it, the point was, is like he's second place to whoever the first place lobbyist was. And it's like, it's like when they point out in the office, Dwight's assistant to the regional manager. <laughs> I right. found it so funny, and I was going. I was pretending to be the guy's mom and be like, "Oh, I saw, I saw Timmy's uh, lobbyist was in the article, and don't worry, Timmy's gonna get there. He's gonna make number one. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm oh hysterical laughing. All these people heard was nut allergy, and that was it. I had nut allergy and people and laughing. <gasps> really? I had nut allergy people writing me for weeks, for weeks, to the point where. One of the managers was like, you have to just say you're sorry. And I refused. No I was way. like, I will not apologize. Because never oh did I God. say, I don't believe in nut allergies. Of course I believe in that. I don't give a shit. Like, if you tell me you got a nut allergy, I'm not going to be here. Be like, nut allergies aren't real. But that's what these people thought. And the, and they just were nonstop. What, what bottle of soda did you just drop, Frank? <laughs> no, it, was, it was an empty water bottle. <laughs> Please keep going with your nut allergies and how Are you, you hate okay, people Frank? with nut allergies. Are you okay, Frank? All I saw was Frank reach for something and then go like this. Oh. <laughs> no, but continue. I didn't mean to interrupt you talking about how much you hate people with nut allergies. <laughs> <laughs> or how much you don't believe in nut allergies. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that was so. So there's just and so at, by the way, so to wrap this all up, my point is at a certain point. <clears throat> You know, I can't there wait. There's a ghost behind you, Janine. I'm like, sorry, oh, but the drug the woman has a ghost in her house slowly. who opens doors. You're such a liar. <laughs> I swear to God. That door just opened. <laughs> the door just opened. By, I don't know if yeah. someone pushed it or what, but your door just opened. Your drug yep, dealer's here. Janine, your drug dealer's here. He's, that's the sign. Yes. Hold on. You got it off of me? Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, my, point is, is, my point is, is that at the end of the day, nobody really gives a shit about you. It's more about them and them pushing their shit onto yes, you. Exactly. So you're a drug addict. You don't believe in nut allergies. You should be fired. You're ugly. You're this. You're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about is all of them trying to put themselves over. Exactly. And there is free therapy from Anthony. <laughs> oh, I got boxes on my face. There we go. There That's we go. what she said. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> All right, I think we should leave oh. it there. Do, unless uh, Janine, you do you want to? You have more to say? I want to give you the platform to be like final thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> I you you had a lot of anger built up about it. I feel a little bit better now. Thank you. About you do. Talking, you know, after we talked Good. about it, yes, yeah. I do. It doesn't matter. So, um, but I did see someone like reply back to my comment. Uh, as we're talking right now from YouTube. So I got to go see oh, what they God. say. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Just listen to our girl, Taylor Swift. I love Let's the... Hate hate. Hate. We did We did one on... I forget what it was, that video uh, during the... Uh, it was like to discredit Fauci. Oh, I, my God. In the thing, I literally go... I go... As soon as I saw the music and the setup, I turned it off because I knew it was bullshit because that, that music and that setup says this is a line of... Guard, like, you know... And people were like, he didn't even watch the thing. He didn't even see I, the thing. I'm like, you my, didn't say you did. My, my point was, is I didn't watch it because it's so aw the first five seconds are so awful and unbelievable. I didn't waste my time. And these people were criticizing me for not watching the stupid thing, <laughs> for not watching the made up thing. It's like you can't, you know, you can't help you can't certain win. people. You can't win. You're not, you can't fool. You can't please 100 percent of the people 100 percent of the time. You yeah. can't do it. No, you can't. It is going to hate. And then you find yourself, honestly, after you're doing it for, for this long, you find yourself just grateful people took the time to, to watch to or something. to listen at, at all. Yeah. Even if it was negative, you're like, thanks for just even giving it a try. <laughs> Thank you, you know. for the thanks for insulting recognition, me. Rhea. Thank you for insults. <laughs> yeah. The good thing is, is when, when you walk around with a face like this, you're never too high anyway. So it's a, you, you can't oh, really stop. knock it too far down. Stop. Your eyebrows are great. He's so Play thirsty. He was looking for a compliment. There you right. go. <laughs>
that eyebrow compliment just now from Janine was very <laughs> Constantine-ish right there. Did you notice that, Frank? It was very like <gasps> No. She was like, Oh, your eyebrows. Say it again. Great. She complimented me on my eyebrows. It was very Constantine. She's like, Your eyebrows are great. It's like I I know. I know I'm aware of all the We don't need you to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> you don't what, need what we me. Might. <laughs> Weren't you listening to the Elvis Costello part of the story, Janine? What the hell? Jesus. Duh. Duh. Yeah, learn a lesson or two. No. no. I think we should just take an episode of the podcast and just insult each other through the whole thing. Get them all out there so that nobody will have any fuel for, uh, for the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they'll add to it. Wait, you forgot this. <laughs> That's true. There's always something else you could say. <laughs> there is. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there. Appreciate it if you got this far in the podcast. AnthonyOnAir.com has all of our links, as always. Remember to rate and review on Apple. They're the only ones that ask for that. It's annoying, I know, but uh, your your reviews do go a long way, even if they are negative. And uh, <laughs> thumbs up on uh, Facebook Especially or YouTube. And um, subscribe. I mean, are we, we're locked into Ghislaine now, are we not? I mean, are we not following every every new little detail that comes out about this? Yes. <clears throat> yeah so we'll have to see so oh. definitely we'll, subscribe we'll see what happens. definitely subscribe if you're in on the uh on the galane stories because we'll be uh we'll be following this all the way up into her suicide we'll be there but oh jeez <laughs> but not just that we talk about a ton of other things oh yeah 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 it's not gonna just be that's a great point right it's not gonna just be that i'm happy to get into other things i'm hoping to get into a lot of other things until these next group of papers come out so that'll be nice Ooh, okay. All right. Appreciate it as always. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.